Welcome to another edition of Running Rampant on BronxNet in association with Fordham Athletics and presented by United Healthcare. Emmanuel Barbari with you, coming to you from the Rose Hill campus at Fordham in front of Eddie's Parade and Keating Hall. We have a packed show for you on this holiday week, Christmas right around the corner as well as the new year. The men's and women's basketball programs looking to jumpstart their seasons. Women's basketball program, season underway, just started conference play. Men's basketball, Atlantic 10 play, right around the corner. We'll get an update on all of that and much more from Fordham Interim Director of Athletics, Ed Cole. We're going to transition into a little bit of a flashback with a Fordham football great, Joe Moorhead, currently the offensive coordinator at Oregon, fresh off a Pac-12 title. Ed and I will join Joe and reflect on some Fordham memories and how he's navigated this pandemic-ridden season. We're also going to join together some of the Fordham basketball greats, current Fordham head coach Jeff Neubauer welcomes former head coach Nick McCartrick and assistant coach Frank McLaughlin. So that's part of our Ramily bonding series and we're very excited for that chat as well. A packed show ahead, but as always, we started off with Fordham Interim Director of Athletics, Ed Cole. Welcome back. This is our AD update. Emmanuel Barbari joined by Fordham Interim Director of Athletics, Ed Cole. Ed, in front of Eddie's, Keating, great to be with you. Great to be with you, Manny. Holiday week, Christmas week, no better site on campus, no better place to be here at Rose Hill. And women's basketball kicking off conference play against Davidson. They've had some cancellations, they've battled through. What are your thoughts on the early stages of the women's basketball season? Yeah, I, I like what I see. I'd say it's a younger roster, of course. Uh, some challenges through COVID, some uh, rescheduling and some and some some have to some repivoting of some games. Uh, but I think uh, knowing Coach Gately, knowing her success, you know, early on is the opportunity to kind of find out new style, new approach uh, in terms of on, on court uh, possessions, and they're and they're and they're figuring out their rotation still. Uh, but I like what I'm seeing from a lot of our young players, and as you know, a Coach Gately team. They're always getting better and better by the months and through conference season. Flipping it over to the men's side, forced to cancel the final two games of non-conference play, booting up the season against George Washington at the end of the month. What factored into that decision to not add a game to the schedule and just start off with a 10 play? Yeah, it, it's something that's been a very fluid situation. Uh, so our, our men actually came off of uh, quarantine on the 18th, started practices again as a group. Um, you know, it's it's interesting part of COVID, Manny, where we're talking a lot about the virus, its impact. But don't forget now, when coming out of quarantine, a lot of our, these young men and, and, and women, women for that matter, have not been physically active to the level they're used to being. So then you also worry about other injury in terms of rushing back too quickly, hamstrings, uh, pulls, etc. So we're trying to build them back slowly, re-socialize them back to our system, and something we'll monitor. I know there's been some conversation possibly of adding a game. We'll see how kind of practices work out and how quickly our, our men get back up to speed. And you look ahead to the Atlantic 10 schedule, starting against GW, then going up to LaSalle for the first road game. What's your outlook on the men's basketball program this season? What do you hope to see? It's obviously a very, very competitive conference. We've seen a lot of success so far from the A-10, uh, a lot of big wins from some of our, our programs. It's going to be a, a rough and tough, a very physical year. Um, I, obviously, I like what our, our men are doing, what they're building. Obviously, hopefully they get healthy uh, and they get back up to speed. We want that first and foremost for our student athletes to be healthy and get back. But I think welcoming back all of our returning starters, welcoming back a lot of our roster uh, a year later in terms of maturity and knowing Coach Neubauer's system. I'm optimistic on obviously our direction. I like the matchup obviously against GW to start the conference play and hopefully gets us going on the right foot and get some momentum into 2021. Right, had their number two times last year, GW, and a third time at the Atlantic 10 tournament. Speaking of building back up, you potentially have a Fordham football spring season coming up. Some discussions about a shortened Patriot League schedule and getting everything booted up and getting some football at Jack Coffey Field. Where are those discussions at at the current moment? So just actually got off of a uh, Zoom call with the Patriot League. We are currently looking at a four to five game spring schedule, which would start approximately on March 13th. And uh, it's a, a good opportunity, obviously, to get some games, get some play under our belts for our, for our young men and our, our, our program. Um, Patriot League has enforced a little bit of a, of a different kind of model for all of their sports. No overnight stays for hotel, no air travel. So the four games that they're trying to map out and identify four to five is based on geographical travel uh, restrictions and obviously the COVID safety protocols. So we're excited. I know Coach Conlon is excited to get those young men back out there. It's been a while since we played some football and it'd be good just to have them out in the field and be physically active. And I think Coach is really positive about 
the returning starters, obviously our, 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 his program a thir in his third year. And as you know, we just had National Signing Day. We're excited to welcome 10 new signees, uh, eight different states, two different countries, uh, a very, very talented and, and good depth of a group. Uh, coach was able to work out and have practices throughout the fall, which was an advantage of ours over a lot of Patriot League schools. So I'm very happy and optimistic for Coach Conlon and the program heading into the spring. Ed, I think a lot of people can relate during this time since March when everything first shut down. It's been a good time to reconnect and, and stay involved with everyone, whether it's virtually or even in person, socially distanced as we are right now. Ramily Bonding is a new series that Fordham Athletics has put together to connect current students and current staff with former students and alumni and former Fordham greats. How important has that type of connection been to you? It, it's been essential. It's been essential the entire nine months of this pandemic, whether it be internally with Fordham folks on campus, with obviously Fordham alums outside. A lot of our student communication, as you know, is doing through the virtual piece still, even as we're here on campus or in the office. And it's been a lot of fun. You, you've been a big part of it, so I know you know a lot about it, Manny. And you know, for those that haven't seen some of those videos, hopefully you have. It's been a lot of fun. So Joe Moglia, obviously Coastal Carolina's run now, top 10, heading for a bowl game. It's great to see his impact there. Uh, we just finished filming one with Joe Moorhead this past weekend, the Pac-12 championship. Right. Tom Penders going into the College Basketball Hall of Fame. So just a real exciting time to reconnect to catch up, but also to share some good engagement and content with all of our alums who unfortunately may probably stuck at home or not able to get out as often as they like to. So it's so many benefits uh, of, en of engaging our alums, of connecting with them during these challenging times. And it's just been, it's really been a godsend in terms of having the technology. Ed, great to catch up with you. Happy holidays. Hope to talk soon. Appreciate it, Manny. All the best. Merry Christmas and happy holidays to all of you. Go Rams. Welcome to another edition of our Ramley Hangout Series. Emmanuel Barbari with Fordham Interim Director of Athletics, Ed Cole. We have a special guest today, former Fordham football head coach, Patriot League champion, offensive coordinator at Oregon, fresh off the Pac-12 championship, and we are uh, grateful to have you here today. Joe Moorhead. Joe, thanks so much for being here. Really appreciate it, fellas. Hope you guys are doing well. Uh, thanks for having me on. Joe, hours removed from the Pac-12 championship. Amazing, uh, obviously, how, how 2020 has played out here. Coach, you and I have talked a lot in my initial nine months on the job, and we had a conversation probably in September, maybe, maybe late August, early September. Pac-12 wasn't even playing football yet or even talking about playing football yet, and you were telling me about how Oregon and how youth sports were shut down there and, 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 and Little Moorhead, who I know is a baseball player, which is near and dear to me too, wasn't even playing ball, and you were asking me about Patriot League and Atlantic 10 and what we're doing in New York City. Can you imagine being here on December 19th, Pac-12 champions? You need another ring on one of those fingers, and you're running out of fingers soon for championship rings. And the world's an interesting place. I know you're a very faithful man. You're a good Fordham man. Many left out. He's a Hall of Famer for us, as well as obviously former right. football player and quarterback for the Rams. And you know your family has been following you this whole way through. No football for us this semester, so you become our adopted team, and you're our adopted son, as you as you know, our, our favorite son. Tell us, how, how does this work out? And I know you had a plan. You always do, but you couldn't have drew this up any better, Coach. No, I mean, 2020 in a lot of different ways has been such a roller coaster of events, uh, you know, not just football, but, but in our country and around the world. And, you know, as you mentioned earlier, it's gone from, you know, not having a season to decide we're going to play, you know, going through a truncate, truncated schedule, uh, you know, having the opportunity to play Washington in a season finale to determine who was a Pac North champion uh, and to see who, uh, you know, went to the Pac, Pac 12 championship game. And then Washington was hit with some, some uh, COVIDs and they weren't able to play. So we jumped in there and uh, we, we actually game plan three different opponents in a span of 10 days. So we were putting a game plan together for Washington. That game got canceled. Then Washington became the uh, Pac-12 North representative. So we were set to play Colorado. And then Washington found out they couldn't play. So we, we had to step in. And obviously USC is a, a uh, you know, phenomenal, uh, you know, team and opponent. But, but just to, to, to culminate, this in, this football season with a with a, a championship after all that this team that's in the, the kids have been through uh, it, it was uh, of the championship teams I've been a part of this was a particularly rewarding experience on a lot of different well, levels just because of the challenges everybody's faced. 
Coach, as you were outlying, no real playbook for a season like this. Was there any motto that that you or the team went by to 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 stay on on focus and, and stay in line towards the championship? Yeah, Coach Chris Ball, our head coach, has done a, ph- a phenomenal job just relative to our culture and our process. And he always talks about going one and zero every week, and that didn't just pertain to the things that we were doing, uh, you know, relative to our preparation and in our, our play on the field. But uh, you know, he was very uh, you know, specific about about our protocols and, and our players uh, staying safe and, and making sure they're wearing their mask and socially distancing and doing all those things. And I think our players did a really good job with that. So we're a very process oriented organization, but I think that that showed up on a lot of different levels, not just on the field, but off the field as well. Coach, you also were talking about the thrill of winning a championship. You were a 2014 uh, Patriot League champion at Fordham, of course, as well. When you look back at that season and your and your time at Fordham, what was most rewarding about being able to get that done? Uh, that particular game, I mean, we we had a a lot of great players on that team. You know, it was an excellent season, and, I, and it, it came down to that that uh, finale up at Bucknell. And uh, I don't know, you probably recall, you know, midweek, Michael Niebrick, our starting quarterback, was, was uh, you know rolled out of the game with appendicitis, so we had to go with Peter Metzl, our backup quarterback. Uh, we fell behind in the second half, made a late run. I think Chase Edmonds scored a touchdown to tie the thing up and send it into overtime. And then uh, we had a great double move called uh, to, to Bucky Jones. It, it caught them on a, a slant slant corner, and to Bucky caught it and tried to punt the ball and about half missed it, and everyone went nuts. But uh, God, that, that's the thing I remember the most. It, it's a re- it was a really special team, a lot of great kids. Uh, beat a lot of really good teams, including some 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 1A teams and uh, – you know, I think there was also a barbecue fire at halftime of that game as well. I, I think that stopped the game, if I'm not mistaken. One of their one of their food vendors caught fire and, and stopped the game midway through. So that, that's another thing that sticks out from that game. That was that was pretty funny as well. Coach, that's an incredible memory and detail that you have of those. And um, we actually have some good news on Mike Niebrick, by the way. He just got voted into the Fordham Rams Hall of Fame. Oh, he did? He did, Coach. Oh, that's he awesome. He, he texted me last night. I have to hit him up. Please, please do. He'll be happy to hear that you're, you're aware of that. And coach, throughout this odd year, and, and obviously Manny talks about the incredible run at Fordham, but throughout this odd year, you know, your offense uh, was, was on top of num- a number one for many weeks. Uh, you were offensive coordinator uh, multiple weeks throughout this, throughout this year, throughout this weird season. You, you literally are our first year coordinator back with no- Oregon, new system, new relationships, new part of the country, new head coach. I mean, Talk about how you're able to just find success quickly, adapt, and, and, and really implement your style, your approach, and your culture and environment quickly to, to a program. And, and here we are again, Pac-12 champions. Amazing. Yeah, I think the, the biggest challenge was, you know, coming off of essentially no spring ball. So, so we were four practices in when, when the thing really hit and they shut it down. And then everything turned into a Zoom world. We were trying to you know, teach your concepts and install your offense, you know, virtually. And, you know, that works well, but only to a certain extent. And then, you know, you, you weren't playing the season. You kind of had a shortened up, you know, fall camp. But for us to have, you know, Justin Herbert obviously graduated and is on his way to be a rookie of the year. Panay Sewell, you know, opted out for the season, you know, our Outland Trophy winner. So we had a new quarterback, five new starting offensive linemen, a bunch of new faces. for So for our kids to be able to, you know, lead the league in total offense, Scored over 30 a game in every every game but one, I think, this year. And then, you know, ended with a uh, pretty solid performance against a great USC team in the championship. Uh, you know, I think it speaks volumes to, to our culture and to, to our players. Coach, flashing back to some of the points we were hitting on about your time at Fordham, you mentioned Chase Edmonds. And I'm curious from your perspective, you, you coached him the early stages of his Fordham career and – he kind of shattered every expectation now to the extent where he's a really productive national football league player. Has this surprised you at all? What you've seen from chase, knowing his character, coaching him along the way. I I can't really say it has surprised me. You know, there's sometimes where a a guy, maybe at an FCS level, you know, that's kind of always the underdog story, but, but chase came in with a chip on his shoulder, you know, very lightly recruited. I think we did a great job with the identification and the evaluation. And then when he came here, I'll say the, the rest kind of took care of itself. I, I remember it was one of our first uh, fall camp scrimmages of his true freshman year. And we called a run play when he was in with the twos and he broke an 80 yard touchdown run and all the coaches kind of just 
turned and looked at each other like, hey, man, we might have something special here. And really didn't start the first game against St. Francis, but I think he went for close to 200 yards of total offense. And, you know, for as talented of a player as Chase Evans is, uh, they'll kill me in English. It, for, it, for, uh, just added a sentence in a preposition there. My English major is going to get revoked here. <laughs> but uh, uh, he, he, he's just as good of a of – a, I mean, his character, his work ethic, you know, all, all those things, when you combine talent, work ethic, and character, to me, it, it can't be a surprise what he's doing. And, uh, you know, certainly very proud of Chase and, you know, everything he's doing at the next level. Coach, I know you get a bunch of text messages from Fordham faithful, your former classmates, your former teammates – a student athlete that's played for you. Um, give, if you could, give a little message here to your Fordham family, your Fordham Ramley uh, out there that you know has probably sent you a bunch of text messages. I'm sure you haven't even been able to get through them all. But as they congratulate you on winning another conference championship and, and the fifth conference championship, a different conference that you've been a part of, just, just remarkable. Give a little Fordham love and a little Bronx cheer to some of those folks that, would, that I'm sure excited to hear from you. No, absolutely. And first and foremost, you got to be excited about Coach Collin and the direction he's taking the program. I, Joe was a defensive lineman at Pitt when I was a first year GA. So, and uh, his mom actually taught my wife in high school. So, uh, I know Joe's doing a great job there with the staff and up, some of the up, some of the upgrades that have uh, taken place with the facilities and giving the kids an opportunity to really, uh, you know, hone in and be successful. But yeah, I mean, they talk about Fordham being a family, and it's and it's really not cliche. Uh, you know, you, you come out of the, off the field and you're checking your text messages and, you know, seeing things online through social media and it's classmates, it's teammates, it's kids you coached, it's their parents, it's administrators that, uh, you know, that bond that you make as a, a student athlete or, or a, uh, you know, part of the Fordham uh, community is one that, that is, cannot be understated and, and, it, and, it, and it's always something that sticks with you. So certainly for my four years there as a player, my four years there as a coach, there are bonds and ties there that can never be broken. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's something that's unique and special. And the, the, just the whole, the, the whole, you know, when you package it together with a, with a Jesuit mindset and mentality, you know, I, I think that's something that's, that's uh, you know, kind of separates, separates Fordham from, from other places. Coach, very well said. Congratulations again. And we really appreciate a couple of minutes here. Awesome, guys. Really appreciate your time. Keep up the great work and go Rams. Coach, thank you so much from myself, Coach Conlon, Father McShane. And hopefully it is Fiesta Bowl. I know we'll figure out where it lands and uh, be excited to watch you and continue to support you. Good luck to you and, your, and our best to your family, please. Appreciate it. Thanks, Ed. Hello, Ramley. We can't thank you enough for the support you have shown our teams and our athletic department this year. As the holiday season approaches, we want to wish you a happy, healthy, and a safe time with your family and friends. While 2020 has been different, one thing has remained the same. Our family sticks together. And we are stronger than ever. From all of us at Fordham Athletics. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Merry Christmas and happy holidays. May your days be merry and bright. As we wish you a new year full of peace and joy. We are so excited and look forward to seeing you all in person come the spring. And we look forward to reconnecting and getting back to some normalcy soon. But please know, everything you do, all of your outreach, all of your love and care means the world to us. And we could not do any of this without you. And we mean that from the bottom of our hearts. I hope you have a wonderful holiday season. Go Rams. Emmanuel Barbari joined by Fordham men's basketball head coach Jeff Neubauer and former Fordham basketball coaches Nick Bakarczyk and Frank McLaughlin. Guys, thanks for being here. Pleasure, Manny. Pleasure to be here. Let's start with you, Coach. How's the preparations going for the season? Obviously a very difficult time. How's the team responding? Yeah, we've got a lot of experience on this Zoom call, but I don't think anyone here has ever dealt with anything similar to this pandemic. I mean, just one of a kind situation. So uh, we've endured a 14-day quarantine. Our guys did not leave their dorm rooms for literally 14 days. And when we got back on the court, it looked like they hadn't left their beds for 14 days. So we're working our way back, really eager to play uh, a challenging schedule this year. 
Coach, you've talked a lot in the past about how the game has changed and now you have more access to the players than, than these two men had even in the past. How much does this, what you're dealing with right now, align with maybe what college basketball used to be? Yeah, it's a great question. So, Frank, there probably were no rules back when you were coaching. I'm not sure. But I know when Coach McCarchick was in charge, there <laughs> were no summer workouts at all. And the right. coaches couldn't touch their guys until October 15th. That's kind of the situation we we're in this year where we weren't able to practice all summer, which going back to Coach McCarchick's teams, he was used to that. That was part of the job. Coach McCarchick, how does this compare with what you had to deal with in your career? Well, you know, I, I look at the game now and it, it's really changed. I mean, from certainly when we were at Fordham and I'm sure with Frank, you know, when he was an assistant coach with Digger at Fordham when I, with that great 70 team. But everything now is like high screens. Uh, no sets, kind of open it up, you go play, you start off with a high screen, and then you go from there. So from that standpoint, it's really changed. And then ball reversals, dribble penetration, kick the ball for threes. I mean, you look at Fordham and the number of threes that they shoot in the game, and most teams are shooting at least 25 to 30% of threes, which is completely different from when we played, and I'm sure it's completely different from when Frank was uh, the assistant coach with Digger. Coach McLaughlin, is that the main evolution in your mind, the, the high volume of shooting? Well, uh, first of all, I, I want to say this. I, I was fortunate uh, to be involved with the 70-71 team, and I was a uh, spectator with, with Nick's great team. And I, I want to say this, Nick did a phenomenal job. He's a very special person. He's a great coach. And he took a group of guys and I think, I think there was one point during that season, Nick, he won 17 in a row or something like that. And uh, it, was, it, was, it was very exciting. The Rose Hill gym was always sold out and stuff like that. And I, I just have a couple of memories of, of, of Jean Prelu hitting game-winning threes. Won it at Lehigh, I believe. And, and then uh, up at Holy Cross, so we went up there as heavy underdogs. And uh, Nick's team pulled it out. And uh, Prelu hit a three at the buzzer. Uh, to beat Holy Cross, and the Fordham students at that time used to have a, a chant, uh, the Bronx is in the house, and uh, these obnoxious Holy Cross fans couldn't believe that there was a group of people that were proud being from the Bronx, and then I, Nick went down uh, and played a very good South Florida team, and uh, we upset South Florida at South Florida, and I can remember George Steinbrenner being at the game, and a group of Fordham students being on spring break coming to the game. And Steinbrenner just loved the fact when they started chanting, the Bronx is in the house. And then uh, the, the 70 71 team was, uh, it was a once in a lifetime kind of thing. Uh, Digger was very young. He was 29. I think I was 23. And none of us knew what the hell we were doing. And, uh, but we were very relaxed. He took a team, Digger took a team that was uh, 10 and 15. And then miraculously, uh, you know, it was sort of interesting, Jeff, in the sense of nobody, ex uh, the expectation levels were not that high. All of a sudden, the team started gelling and winning games they shouldn't have won. And then they started playing with more confidence. I mean, you're talking about a team that beat Syracuse and Boston College and at Georgetown. I mean, Pitt, Seton Hall. I mean, they, they beat everybody. And, uh, but it was a group of guys that there was a very low expectation for but they believed in, in each other and uh, did miraculous things. Yeah. You know, I'd yeah. like to just jump in here for a second because uh, the other day I was coming back from grocery shopping because that's the highlight of my week. I get one day a week when I can go out and shop. <laughs> so I, I, I really looked at the tomatoes very carefully to make sure that they're the kind that I like in my salad. But I was thinking about how, and Jeff started out talking about this, how difficult it is to coach right now. I spoke with Dagan Nelson, who's the head basketball coach at NYU. Our grandson, Nick, is a, a junior at NYU. And I said to him, how in the heck can you get through each day? Just with the things that you have to do, how do you recruit now? How do you coach? It's just completely different. It's something that no one has ever experienced before. And now all of a sudden, these 365 Division I coaches and 
Division II, and NYU is not even going to play basketball this year. Uh, the, uh, the Ivy League is not going to play basketball this year. So there are just so many things that hang in the balance as to how this virus goes. And practice every day, and Jeff's had to quarantine his players for 14 days. It is a, it's, it's a difficult job anyhow, Jeff. But this just makes it so much more difficult. Yeah. Hey, I, hey, Nick. I just I, can I just add here. This is really funny. I was talking to Ed Cole, our great athletic director, the other day, and since he's a baseball guy from Stony Brook, I said to him, I said, "This basketball season is going to be like Dan Gallagher was with baseball. They would schedule like sixty games. You'd cancel a game on Tuesday, and the next thing you know, he's playing a doubleheader on Wednesday. So." Really, uh, Jeff, you're like a baseball coach now. It's a day-to-day -day thing. Yeah, let's play too, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Well, I think this goes beyond college basketball, but the thing that everyone's going to get out of this pandemic is we simply appreciate things now that we've taken for granted for many, you know, for our lifetimes. So, you know, we are learning to really appreciate how great it is simply to be on the court and be able to be at a practice with our team. I think that's a really good point. Uh, when when you look at two of the former coaches here, throughout this time, it's been a very difficult year. What's one thing you, you, you feel you took for granted that, that maybe you're holding on to very, very closely right now? Uh, for me, I think it's the ability to have the players, uh, you know, for individual workouts when it's, you know, when you want them to come, when you work around their class schedule. And now with this going on, it, it doesn't work that way. And I'm sure that Jeff has – a lot of bobbing and weaving and a lot of changes. And it's just a very, very difficult situation just to practice and just to have individual workouts, never mind trying to play the games, which are going to start, I guess, after Thanksgiving or right around November 25th. But just the day-to-day -day preparation and the day-to-day -day recruiting is going to be and has been, I'm sure, so difficult. Coach McCarchick or Frank, did either of you ever have a game canceled for any reason? You know, it's happened through the years. But did you ever lose a game because of anything while you were a coach? I had a couple of games I would like to have canceled. But yeah. no, uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, we were supposed to open up with Iona um, here in November, but that, is, that game has already been canceled. Yes. Um, yeah, so we are going to start on December 3rd against Manhattan. And really, we just go into every night and wake up every morning with our fingers crossed, you know, hoping that we're going to get to play the season. I coached in Buffalo for nine years. So, and when I was there, we had a lot of snow. They don't get much snow now, but we had a lot of snow. So we had a couple of games canceled when I was at Canisius. But uh, at Fordham and uh, Stony Brook, no, we didn't have any games canceled. Coach McCarchick, the guys I remember from your great teams, so first of all, Jay Fazand went to a rival high school of mine, and my career record against Jay Fazand's high school was 0-10, and, and four of those took place against Jay my senior year. So, like, he was a terrific guard. But then also, Frank mentioned um, Prelo earlier. Just amazing guards that you got to coach. Yeah, um, we were very lucky. We had uh, – when I came, Frank uh, – brought me down and asked me what I thought about it. And we loved being there, my wife, Pat, and I. And uh, I, I think that uh, before we even got home, we said we were going to take the job. And so I brought with me two great guys, Dave Spiller and Stan Van Gundy. Two of my assistants at Canisius came down, and they're the ones that went out and got players right away and kind of built the program with Prelude coming and then Jay coming a little bit later. And both of them were so smart and so intelligent, didn't turn the ball over, and knew who to get the ball to when. And that's so important if you have guards that are unselfish and don't care about themselves. Thanks so much again for tuning in to another edition of Running Rampant on BronxNet in association with Fordham Athletics. Big thanks to our guest today, Fordham Interim Director of Athletics, Ed Cole former Fordham football head coach and offensive coordinator at Oregon, Joe Moorhead, and former Fordham basketball head coaches, Nick Pekarczyk and Frank McLaughlin. They joined current men's basketball head coach, 
Jeff Newbauer. Also, a big thanks to everyone at Bronxted and Fordham Athletics who made this episode possible. As always, we'll see you in two weeks. Yeah.